Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Finding Data Friends. We've been lucky enough to find another data friend that neither of us know at all at this point. So this is going to all be brand new for everyone. This uh, is but Sandra, new. thanks for thanks for joining us on the podcast. Do you want to tell us a bit about who you are? Uh, yeah, I'm um, I'm Sander, and uh, yeah, uh, I uh, know uh, I don't know Jess from my work because we're co-workers. So yeah, <laughs> never <laughs> so I, I, Just like Jess, I work at Data Masterminds. I'm from the Netherlands, and uh, uh, I do a lot of cool stuff with uh, uh, cool projects there. Nice. So as you mentioned, we both work together at Data Masterminds, which means there is plenty of data things that might be your very favorite, but you have to try and pick just one for this next question. No. So what is your Don't favorite? Don't try. Pick one. There is no try. Do not break the rules, okay? When you break the no. rules, terrible things can happen. I know. And we have to leave the audience on a cliffhanger, so. Yes, nobody wants uh, that. But Sander, what's your favorite data thing? It's not particularly a data thing, but I love doing automation and DevOps uh, related things. And that has something to do with data, right? We do uh, uh, infrastructure as code, make sure that all the uh, machines are working, uh, make sure we have staging environments to do our data development or all those kind of things and make that work. And that is really exciting stuff to do. I think that counts as data. It's very much data adjacent, if not exactly data, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm more like a DBA. I don't handle data itself, right? So, What does the D in DBA stand for? Dedicated. I, I, <laughs> I see. Fair. <laughs> well played. Yeah, I was not sure where this was going when you answered the data question with, well, it's not particularly data, but um, good, good save there. I have to give you that. Yeah. Came back around. <laughs> yeah. I was worried for a second this would be another breaking of the rules. And again, we all know what could happen. You cliffhangers. Should not be worried. We don't want the cliffhanger at two minutes in, though, because that really <laughs> yeah. the episode quite short. <laughs> hey, this is a way for us to record more podcasts, though. We just introduce the guests and then we're like, ah, everyone freeze. And then we just end it. <laughs> uh, true story. But then again, I, I kind of feel like at the 15 ish minute episode thing, we're already at lightning talk length true, true. so i mean yes we could do two minute episodes but seems with the like two minute intro that seems like minute, yeah. a lot of overhead <laughs> not so good okay not, scrap that not idea perfect. not not my not, best not, idea it is going to the list of things we will not do unlike that hackathon we were talking about last week but that's a good idea rabbit holes and stuff you know. when uh yeah. when i was helping to plan my wedding i was given a jess idea bucket so that all of the great ideas i had we could put in the jess idea bucket but it turned out just to be a trash can <laughs> so, weirdest thing none of those ideas ever came back out were you made aware of that during before or after the wedding yes all of those things <laughs> i i i see very well. Get it, getting back to the actual topic at hand. Smart, smart. R rabbit holes aren't really made for us, I feel. Uh, I totally agree on the automation thing because it also brings back good memories of how I got started in the data community because my first talks were around BIMO, so automating integration services oh, packages and all that. So Good times, good times. I didn't know that fact about you, Ben. I didn't know that's what your first talks were on. At some point, my first ever talk was a lightning talk at SQL Saturday Vienna, which was actually on a Friday, but who's counting on April 1st of 2016. Wow. There you go. Today I learned. It's at like some winning point, for the first really time, too. We really should have that, <laughs> that episode <laughs> where we're answering we the three questions. Yeah, we don't even know each other. <laughs> it is really nice to meet you, Jess. You too, Ben. For your reference, my name is Ben. It's good to meet you. Uh, let's make another second, or I'm not sure if we had the third attempt of actually getting back to the topic. Um, and, but, but then again, data automation. I mean, talking about something entirely different, talking about your wedding, Jess, that is basically all the same-ish, if that's a thing. Yeah. yeah. Funny enough, just next week at the Past Data Community Summit, Jess and I will both be in a learning path that is centered around automation. It's true. Now that I think of it. So it, it seems like we do agree that automation is a 
really big part of what we're doing these days. And 100%. for me, it is uh, still much bigger than all the co-pilot, chat GPT, um, et cetera, stuff that people, um, that also helped with becoming more efficient with um, a bunch of other, th I mean, Bob Ward was doing this super impressive demo in the keynote at SQL conference a couple of weeks back where he was basically just asking Copilot, hey, write me an app that does this and do it in um, C Sharp. And he got the code and he was like, oh, I just changed my mind. Change this to Python. And two seconds later, it was all Python code. Mm -hmm. I changed my mind again. Make this C++. And or, again, or two C seconds later. Oh. Assembler. <laughs> <laughs> However, um, I think the real productivity boost sits in automating stuff that we really know and uh, that are really good at because that helps you seeing and finding all these patterns that really have the potential to be automated so good news chat gpt will not replace all of us just yet no we're safe we get we're another day to live or two so when you're not automating data, even though we, I really feel we cut that part of the question short, but <laughs> 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 we kind of automated that part of the talk. Let's let's say that when you, when you're not automating <laughs> things um, around data or non-data, do you have any hobbies? Do you have any favorite non-data things, Sander? I have some hobbies. I um. Uh, I love I love to uh, do sports. Like I do field hockey. Uh, I like to work out, uh, do some running, and those kind of things to just get rid of all the stress as well from a day of work. And uh, uh, yeah, I've got a, I've got three kids at home that ask a lot of time as well. <laughs> so, but uh, I love doing uh, like uh, Lego things with my son and those kind of things as well. I'm not sure if somebody just gave two answers in a very sneaky way by saying, well, I love to work out and I also love to build Legos. But then again, since we kind of are in the same boat well, for the Lego part, um, me even worse than Jess, but again, looking behind her, I do see Lego some Lego good. there. L Lego is good. We also settled that while workouts may not be great, they allow us to do other things that we may or may not get to later in this episode. Pre-building here, just pre-planning that segue. <laughs> I like it. Let's plan and see. Perfect. Well, perfect. Build, building some tension with the audience. Okay. Like, okay. okay. Some, I see something what you're doing super here. surprising will be happening. They have no idea what it's going to be, but also now they're like, okay, I have to stay on. I, I, I cannot mm. miss this there unless they leave me on another cliffhanger because if they do, I'm going to cancel this show. But no, this is not happening. No more. It won't happen. No, no more cliffhangers. Oh. Which... I'm not sure we've had field hockey before. I think that's a new one. I was going to say the same thing because, I mean, we've obviously had running, we've had Legos, but uh, field hockey, I think um, that that's a first. Yeah. And have again, you always played that or is that a new hobby that you've picked up recently? It it's uh i've been doing it for a couple of years so uh yeah i i did do a lot of crossfit before but i wanted to do something with a team again so i wanted to be around and do some yeah. uh, team sport so, yeah. so are you in, in like an of, official official club or just playing with some friends from how, how do we have to no, how it's, serious uh, is this uh, field hockey uh, business of yours that's well, pretty serious. We do have games and everything, uh, playing against other teams and uh, those kind of things. So uh, I'm not very good at it yet, but uh, <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah, I played field hockey in school because that was like the sport we played in school. And uh, then I haven't played or watched it for mm, some number of years and then went to the olympics and that was one of the sports we went to watch and i had forgotten all of the rules i was very confused but my favorite part was when all of the defenders were in the goal dressed in extra padding it was like a penalty a penalty free kick or uh, a penalty corner or something like that and then they just charge out as the ball gets delivered into the yeah. middle that i was interested in so oh, they only have like a face mask they're play? not padded I pay. Um, well, they like went. I, I they went behind the goal and put on extra shin pads and like, yeah, and a face mask. Beforehand, they didn't have a helmet on the defenders, at least. Well, the defenders only have a face mask, so they don't have any any other padding. 
Um, I play With a special penalty uh, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you get hit, yeah, it's your problem. You shouldn't have gotten hit. <laughs> so bad so. times. It can be dangerous though. Uh, but uh, at least we have face masks, so we don't come out like Quasimodo at the end of a game. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I play um, more uh, like a uh, uh, back uh, as a defender, more towards nice. the middle. So I'm not a 100% defender, but I also play with the midfield. Cool. Sounds good. So a front defender, back midfield, center kind of player. I, I see. I feel like you've but done this before, Ben. You know what I, to I totally get it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> also. Perfect. Well, all that field hockey must also make you hungry. Like it? Yeah. Which brings us on to our final question, which is the most difficult question of the entire podcast. What is your favorite food? Um, I've thought about this... For a while, depend. The, it also always depends, right? But uh, I've been to the U.S. a couple times, and one of the things that really stuck to me was Texas barbecue. Mm. I will not that stop does eating stick to that. You. It gets all over your face, right? <laughs> Literally, <Yeah. laughs> like brisket, and then uh, yeah, one of the best things. I would agree. They do have good. Uh, barbecue food there i once stood in line for maybe a, some mac and cheese for you shop ben. i was going to say that would be nice maybe no bacon in those mac and cheese sure i remember for one of my first ever microsoft partner conferences back in i'm gonna say this was 2006 or so so not the very first i went to but one of the early ones um and it was in houston texas and um Someone from the local Microsoft office was like, you know what, since you're coming to town, we're going to take you to dinner. And, well, we went to apparently super nice barbecue joint. Um, well, they had amazing Not coleslaw. That is what I can tell you. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I think, about the only vegetarian thing in no about chips? a mile from Fries? the way. Nope. Oh. They were... They were serious about their meat game there. I see that. Perfect. But of course, you need some vitamins and all that, which is why they had salad as in coleslaw. <laughs> salad was... with mayo. That's my favorite kind <laughs> <Yeah>. of salad. <laughs> it was not strong Rich. on the vitamin side, I'm going to say that. But um, okay. it was also not super satisfying as in as a dinner as a by meal. itself. But But again, everybody else was super happy with it, so... I don't know. Perfect. Still, if we're all going to have barbecue at some point in the U.S., let's please pick a place that has A, mac and cheese, and B, fried pickles, please. Thank you. Mm. Oh, fried pickles. Interesting. Because fried pickles, they are the best. Yeah. Not a pickle fan. Have you had fried pickles, Jess? No, I haven't. Because they Your got love. pickles in them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That is correct. <laughs> and yet, so delicious. Scientifically speaking, it's still a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it has all that batter around it and it comes with the ranch sauce and all that. So you you basically don't even get to taste the pickle. Worst case, mm -hmm. because pickles are delicious. Who am I kidding? Yeah. Going to skip that one, I'm afraid. Oh, at some point, I can show you a very good video of um, Patrick LeBlanc trying a pickle at Oktoberfest. So many facial expressions within, I'm going to say, three milliseconds. Okay. <laughs> well, I look forward to that. <laughs> it, yeah. yeah, well, that's a bit of I a stretch. I could, it's also a very scary video, but Perfect. It, it comes with parental advice. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Great. Another episode that has to be on after 9 p.m. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right after last week's Sausage Fest. Thanks again, Jess. <laughs> wow. This is how Jess describes Data Grill and Sender. I mean... Is that not an accurate description for Data Grill? A sausage fest? 
Yes. I've got, a, I've got a totally different idea what a sausage fest is. Well, everybody has. So does everyone, apparently, because <laughs> everybody's mind is in the gutter. But I was talking about the sausages on the grill. Oh. <laughs> Again, thank you, Jess. But now yeah. we've got it in two episodes, so I think we should really just shift our publishing time to later and also check with YouTube that they're check really that. Mar- no it's not suitable watch. for children. Yeah. yeah. Let's be honest, we already had to check that box. Is that so specifically for kids? No. Is that even remotely suitable for kids? Also, no. Not today. <laughs> we apologize. Oh. Dear parents, we're sorry. It is what it is. Or we just start beeping all of that out. But that would be a yeah. whole lot of work. So I'm not sure. Anyways, before we jump into the rabbit hole of censoring every single episode because of Jess doing inappropriate <laughs> stuff on them. Center, thank you so much for joining us this week oh, on this episode, it. for sharing a bit more about you. Thank you fun. very yeah. much, Jess, thank you. for joining us yet again because we couldn't do it without you. Thank you, thank everyone, you, for you, watching ben. because without all of you, this would be really, really pointless. And with that, we will not see you next week because next week, everybody will be at the Pass Summit, so everybody will be busy. Nobody will be catching up anyway. So we see you two weeks from now. See you then. Perfect. Bye. Bye, Bye, folks.